How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here again, looking at 21.4 stuff, rates of decay. And our objectives are to apply the first order decay equation to radioactive decay in order to solve for half-life, the decay rate constant, uh, quantity of radioactive material remaining after a certain amount of time, as well as radioactive dating. All right, so first order decay. What is radioactive decay? That's a good question. Let's just quick review. Remember that we have an unstable nucleus that is going to emit a radioactive particle. It's going to give off a particle and it's going to become a new parent, I'm sorry, a new nuclei. So we end up with a new element sometimes. Uh, the nucleus is changing, right? Radioactive decay changes the nucleus. So how can we quantify how much stuff remains or how much stuff is made? So if we started with a certain amount of iodine-131, time goes by and we get this process, well, we end up with less iodine. How much iodine is left? You know, how much xenon did we make? So that's going to be what we want to address in this video. And it's going to be done by using the first order kinetics, which we looked at when we did uh, rates of reactions, or chemical reactions. So this is the equation. This is the first order rate law, right? We got ln of at equals negative kt plus ln of a0, where at is the amount of parent material at a given time. k is a constant. T is the amount of time that has gone by, and A0 is the original amount of the parent material. How much did you start with? Mm -hmm. All right. So what is a half-life? Well, that's another good question. It is the amount of time it takes for half of the material to get used up. So basically, if I started with 100, uh, how long does it take to become 50? How much time does it take to cut in half? Now, in chemical reactions, it's the time for half of the reactants to be consumed. But we're looking at nuclear reactions. So nuclear reactions is the time it takes for half of the radioactive nuclei to decay. So what happens to our equation if we want to solve for half-life? Well, let's take a look. I got ln of at equals negative kt plus ln of a0. Well, if I just pick percentages, like 100 or something, uh, well, I know I'm going to end up with half of it, right? So I end up with half of my starting amount, which would be 1 over here. And my t is going to be t one half, which just means half life, right? So if you see that notation, it's just saying specifically for half life. Now I'm interested in solving for half life in terms of everything else. So why don't I do some math and rearrange things, All right? Well, I can move this ln of one over to the other side by subtracting it, which now I get ln of one half minus ln of one equals negative k t one half. And now let me move this negative k over, right? Uh, so these are just numbers, right? The ln of one half is just a number and the ln of one is just a number. So why don't I just plug those numbers in and I get negative 0.693. So right now I have negative 0.693 equals negative kt one half. So now let me move things around once more and I get t one half equals 0.693 over k because I divided by a negative k. So if I do negative k on this side, the negatives cancel out and negative k cancels out here. And I'm left with just T1 half equals 0 0.693 over K. Or if I was more interested in K, I can do one more rearranging and it equals uh, K equals 6, 0.693 over T1 half, right? So this is going to be helpful because a lot of times they'll give you the half-life for an isotope. But if you want to use this equation, you got to find out what the K is. So oftentimes, instead of just K, you'll see this 0 0.693 over whatever they told you the half-life was. All right. No, something to note about this is that in my T1 half expression, it's 0 0.693 and K, both of which are constant numbers. So the half-life is independent of how much starting material there is or how much is left. It will always be the same for a material regardless of the conditions or amounts. That's because it's first order. If it was second order, we'd have a different story. But first order, it doesn't matter how much you start with, how much you got left, the half-life is always going to be the same. So let's time a half-life. In this example, green will decompose into red. And we can time how long it takes for half of them to turn red. So if I'd be like, ready, go. And then you start counting. And you got your stopwatch going. And then you keep counting. 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000. So this one took 8 seconds. All right, well, now that I have half of the greens left, how long will it take for half of those to decompose? All right, so it took eight seconds for the half-life of green to turn to red. Will it be the same the second time? Let's see. Ready? Go. 
one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand, seven one thousand, eight one thousand. Boom! It's eight seconds still. So it's always going to be the same. Half-Life doesn't matter how much stuff is there. If I were to do it again, how much does it take for the remaining green to decay? It's Again, it's still going to be eight seconds. Okay, well, so what? Well, one thing we can do, uh, knowing this, is radioactive dating. So we can compare the activity over time. So if I know something is given off this much radiation to start with, and after a certain time it's less, I can figure out how much that changes and how long that would take. Uh, so we can measure how many becquerels, which is denoted, denoted as BQ, which is basically just one disintegration per second. Uh, so we can measure that with like a Geiger counter and see how its activity has changed over time to figure out how much time has gone by. We can also look at how much parent material and how much decay product there are um, using the ratios to determine how much parent material was there originally and then determine the time it lasts. So I know like if I had X and it broke down into Y, uh, I can go, all right, well, if I measure how much Y and how much X I have at a certain time, I can backtrack to figure out how much X I started with so I can figure out how much time must have gone by, right? So let's take a look at some examples. How old is a sample that has a carbon-14 to nitrogen-14 mole ratio of 1 to 3? So it tells me the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,715 years. Well, I know that if it was a 1 to 3, that's the same thing as saying like a 25 to 75 ratio, which I'm doing because I like it to be out of 100 because it helps my brain go, all right, well, how many half-lives have gone by to end up to 25? Well, if I had one half-life, that would bring me to 50%. And if I had a second half-life, that would bring me to 25 of my original carbon-14. So that is also going to be 25 to, well, how much decay product is there? 75. So I know that two half-lives have gone by. So I can do two half-lives times 5715 years per half-life. And I end up with, um, doing the math right now, carry the one, 11,430 years. So this was a really nice one because I had a nice even number of half-lives and I didn't have to use the first order decay equation because it worked out nice and even. Still, uh, let me give you an example where you do have to work that out. So an archaeologist finds a wooden spear on a dig site and measures the activity of carbon-14 to be 11.6 back around. A sample of fresh wood has an activity of 15.2 back around. How old is the wooden spear? Well, first we need to go, hey, all right, half-life, I'm going to use my first order decay equation. So it's ln of at equals negative kt or plus ln of a0, right? Now, my a0 is this 15.2 because it's saying fresh wood has that activity. So once you cut down a piece of wood, it doesn't incorporate carbon-14 into its body anymore from the air because it's dead. And it's decayed from 15.2 to 11.6. So that 11.6 is the amount at that time. So now I can plug and chug and deal with the ugly numbers. But I really like rearranging before I do anything. So I'm going to do that first. All right. So I want to get T by itself. So I got a minus ln of A0. So I get ln of AT minus ln of A0. And that will cancel that out. And now I have just negative K t on the other side. So how do I get t by itself? I got to divide this side by negative k. All right, equals t. And then I got to remember something about k. I got to remember that k equals 0.693 over the t one half. Uh, remember when I solved for the half-life equation, I got this. So this is going to be a handy thing just to remember. 0.693 over t one half is the k. So now I can plug and chug. And I get ln of AT, so it's ln of 11.6, minus the ln of A0, which is going to be that 15.2. And I got to divide all that by 0.693 over the T1 half, uh, which from the previous problem, 5715 years. And then I just pick up my calculator and I plug and chug. And uh, 
oh yeah, make sure like this top part is in parentheses too. If you want to do the top, then divide by the bottom. And I get an answer of 2,230 years when I plug and chug that into my calculator. All right, let's do one more. So we got a rock contains 0.242 milligrams of lead 206 for every milligram of uranium. So I got 0.242 to 1 ratio of lead 206 to uranium 238, right? So it wants to know how old is the rock? Well, it's saying that uranium 238 decays into lead 206. But this doesn't happen in just one step. This is a bunch of steps, right? So that this is one of those decay chains where you have a bunch of steps and then ultimately you end up with lead 206. So now we got to consider, all right, well, this is in milligrams that they're giving me my ratio. And I know that if I, end, I started with one milligram of uranium, I don't end up with one milligram of lead because I'm giving off a bunch of particles. And those particles have mass, and I'm losing that mass. It's not part of the lead anymore. So I got to consider the fact that the ratio between uranium to lead from this equation uh, is going to be 238, because it's uranium-238, becomes 206 lead. So if I had 238 milligrams of uranium, it would decay to become 206 milligrams of lead. So you got to consider that that is the ratio I'm supposed to have. Now I go, hey, well, how much? I need to figure out how much uranium I started with. So they tell me that I have 0.242 milligrams of lead for every milligram of uranium. So I'm going to go, all right, well, let me figure out this uh, 0.242 milligrams of lead, how much uranium did that used to be? So I'm going to have to go, all right, well, let me use this ratio that I determined up here. I know that I want to cancel out lead, so I'm going to put 206 uh, milligrams of lead on the bottom and the 238 milligrams of uranium up top. So now I can multiply my milligrams of lead cancels out and I end up with, I wrote it down, um, 0.283, so 0.283 milligrams of uranium. So this 0.242 milligrams of lead used to be 0.283 milligrams of uranium, which means my A0, the amount that I'm starting with, is at 1 milligram, and this 0.283 milligrams. So my starting amount is really going to be 1.283 milligrams of uranium and the amount at that time is only going to be one milligram right because it's saying right now I have one milligram of uranium and 0.242 milligrams of lead so now it's just like the previous problem where I have to figure out T right so I'm gonna cheat and just recall how that was rearranged it's gonna be the ln of a T minus ln of a zero that's going to be in parentheses, and that is going to be over 0.693 over the half-life, T1 half, right? So now I plug and chug. I'm going to have ln of 1 minus ln of 1.283, and that's going to be on the top, divided by 0.693 over t1 half, which is this 4.5 times 10 to the 9 years. Now I'm going to plug and chug and press the right buttons, press equals. I'm going to get an answer of 1.62 times 10 to the 9 years. So this rock, pretty old, a lot older than I am, right? So this is my final answer. And that's how you do those kinds of problems. All right. So to summarize, again, what can you say about half-life? What can you tell people about how to quantify radioactive decay? Okay. Uh, that's it. I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in class. Bring questions. Goodbye. Okay,